Well, hello, Nashville and uh, our country. Uh, we have a great guest with us, Dr. Carol Swain. She is an amazing American, an American, amazing Christian, and uh, somebody who's charting uh, for people of all, of every stripe and, and, and uh, background. Uh, Dr. Swain is, is an amazing person. We want to get into it uh, here on session two. And remember, uh, her books is uh, that we're, we're kind of advertising today. For those of you, we're going we're gonna to randomly select some people that are getting on our website, which is kenny.mock.org slash show. And uh, we're going to pick some of you. That do, it's a counter uh, cultural living and Black Eye for America. And she gets into to some of the topics we're going to talk about here. Carol, welcome back, and we're honored to have you. Um, you know, uh, somebody like yourself, you know, I look at the, uh, you know, you're, 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 you've got a big, uh, there's got to be a bulletin board with your name on it and your picture and why these Democrats are really not, you don't fit the category that they want you to fit in right now because you have passed, you have, you have shut down every single uh, avenue that they, you know, they think you should be talking about. And, 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 you know, you're, you know, they wanted you to stay a victim, you know, that's their right. You know, they want people to stay in housing and all this stuff. And all of a sudden you're bringing out, they know they deserve, I don't care what color you are. You need a good house. You know, you need a good place to live in. And uh, I'm not going to, you're not going to force me to be the, so what, what, but what was your epiphany moment to say to that democratic party? You, you, I didn't leave you. You left me, right? I mean, I was a Democrat most of my life, like many uh, black people. And I had, um, I left the Democratic Party in my 40s after I had had a Christian conversion experience. And I left because of the Republican platform, which emphasized God, country, uh, and family. Now, Republicans have uh, deviated a lot on a number of issues since I left the Democratic Party. There are some Republicans that seem to want to move closer to Democrat values than standing by the things that really uh, attracted me to them. And I, more than ever, do I see that um, uh, there's no political solution to what ails America that at the root of America's uh, fa failures and decline in the world, uh, it's, it's deviation and it's rejection of Judeo-Christian values and principles that once guided our leaders, that's no longer the case. And as a consequence, every institution in America um, suffers. And we find that uh, people are not trustworthy. They think nothing of betraying their friends and doing all sorts of things. Uh, they're not willing to make sacrifices. So we're living in sad times and those sad times are heightened by the fact that so many people uh, have abandoned God and it's both political parties. It's not one political party. Mm -hmm. You may be a lot like me in this respect. It's, it's like I'm conservative. I'm not, no, I don't know if I can always say I'm, I'm with each party uh, but I, I'm, yes. a, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving more towards that. And it sounds like you're there too. And it sounds like there's a lot of right. Americans. That want to and I can tell you that uh, there are some Democrats that may not like what they see in me and, uh, and some Republicans, because um, I will call them out just as quickly as I will call out the Democrats. Uh, I have a, a set of values that I use to guide my life and to evaluate people and situations and policies. And if it doesn't line up, it doesn't line up. And and so um, I, I, I'm sort of like Aslan, Aslan the lion, uh, you know, when um, Lucy asks, uh, is he safe? And the answer is no. <laughs> you know, I want him to say, but she's good. <laughs> C.S. Lewis would be proud. <laughs> yeah. So um, this this turn to um, to it, it 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 did it cost you? You know, did it cost you? you oh know yeah. Saying? I mean, the left tried to destroy me. Uh, I came from poverty. We talked about that in the last episode. 
and uh, total non-traditional background. And I'm not going to say I pulled myself up by my bootstraps because I had a lot of people that encouraged me and helped me along the way. But they helped me because I was a hard worker. I was sincere and I was eager to learn. And, you know, and when people see someone that's working hard and, you know, they're eager to learn and they're nice and not obnoxious, I can be obnoxious, I'm sure. And I must, I'm sure that I can be, but mostly I'm not. And so I got a lot of help along the way uh, in the form of encouragement. Uh, But some people, you know, I worked while I was in college. And I started off at a community college. I worked uh, 40 hours a week, nights and weekends. They gave me a a full-time job, nights and weekends. And I went to school full-time. And uh, and so- How did you do that? Well, my job was nights and weekends. 40 hours, nights and weekends. And so I went and took my classes during the daytime. And lots of time, I, times I took my children to work with me and I set them down at a table in the library while I work. And uh, it was that kind of job. And how did I do it, it? You made it work. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, and I can confess that there there isn't a whole lot of people, you know, using the library nights and weekends at a community college. God, uh, you know, I was not a divine Christian believer, but I would say that God gave me the perfect job. <laughs> I can do my homework. And that's exactly, that's how I graduated magna cum laude. Yeah. Not because I was a genius. So I graduated magna cum laude, working 40 hours a week uh, at the community college library, going to Roanoke College, a four-year school. But uh, that was possible because the library did not have a lot of traffic during the time I was working. And so I was able to get homework done. (laughs) It was perfect. Only God could have set that up. (laughs) Well, here here we are, um, 2023. And if you would have told me even 10 years ago that um, a Supreme Court justice trying to get on the Supreme Court could not explain what a woman is or that um, people would start going from calling their name Sam, a male, to Samantha, and there'd be no biological change, I would have said, what part of Mars are we on? But we're there, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, it's almost like when we look at America, is America under judgment? There is a scripture that God can give you over to your ungodliness or your wickedness, and God can withdraw wisdom and knowledge. And so when you reject oh, God, you know, you're just out there on your own. And it seems like the evil that has taken a root in America, it, it seems endless and it seems hopeless at times. But I can tell you that uh, personally, I, I just finished few months ago, study of revelation. I've studied it before, but I was just feeling like it's curtains for America. And I still Mm -hmm. feel like China is the world power and that we are subservient to China and that America has fallen and we just don't know it yet. And so, I mean, I still feel that, but I was really dismayed and I felt like the Lord spoke to me. And since I have charismatic and Pentecostal roots, I can say the Lord spoke to me. Uh, but it felt like uh, the Lord said, uh, aren't I God? Do you believe I can do all things? And that just gave me pause because I was pessimistic and people asked me, is it over for America? And, you know, like if I were God, it would be over for America. But I felt like when I was feeling like it was over for America, God said, aren't I God? <laughs> do you, can I do all things? And so, you know, like for people that pray, a God is a God of miracles. And you look at someone like Elon Musk, you know, he's all over the place. And, and he is, is into some things, you know, that uh, he's very, I mean, he's a genius. He's so intelligent. Uh, and so I, I agree with some, some, I agree with his stance on free speech and a lot of the positions he has today. Uh, I may not agree with some of the research he funds, but you know, God may be raising up people like that that come from the enemy's ranks 
Yeah. And God can do all things and he can convert the hearts of someone in power that you never thought you'd see flip. Let's say flip. <laughs> he could flip George Soros if he wanted to. <laughs> uh, unless, I mean, there are some people that I think the Bible says they're destined for evil or they're destined for, and I'm not a cavernous and I'm going down a path that I need to pull back from right now. But I know that God saves the unlikeliest people. Let's, let me stick with the Bible and Saul on the road to Damascus and how God changed him into the Apostle Paul. For America to really uh, change, we would, have a, we would need another great awakening. We would need a revival. Amen. And it is possible because we know with God, all things are possible. And, uh, you know, we had that college campus in Kentucky where there were a few weeks or maybe a couple of months of what seemed to be a revival. Uh, God can ignite something. He can catch everyone by surprise. So no yes. human being can say that, you know, it's over for America. It's over for any particular country because God is God. He can do all things. I love that. I, I mean, I absolutely love that. So uh, Biden's a mess. We know that. Let's just, let's just go there. Um, well, I mean, that's fact. Like, huh? That's fact, not opinion. Yeah, that's, right? that's, that's fact. <laughs> the, elect, the, elect, the electoral system is a mess. Um, how do we, uh, you know, I mean, both these men are better than Biden. You know, we, we know Trump and we know DeSantis are going to be running, but it's interesting to know you're, you're a political scientist. What's 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 going to happen in, in your in your best way of thinking in terms of what is the country where is the country leaning to on on a leader what what is where, where well is I it mean it, it's almost we had a time where the country can lean any way it wants but until we fix the electoral system and uh, the fact that there are people that have power and I am among the people that believe that in 2020, there were all kinds of shenanigans that took place uh, and that election fraud and uh, took place in, uh, in many different ways, not in one particular way, because there were yes. many ways to uh, affect the vote, even with the FBI and the CIA suppressing information that would have influenced voters. Uh, and the the targeting of Trump, and no matter what you think of Trump, because I know some Christians are divided, I think it's the first time a president did not get a honeymoon period. Because traditionally, the first hundred days after a president is elected is known as the honeymoon period, and whatever they can get through legislatively, that's the best time for them. But the day after candidate Trump became um, the uh, uh, President Trump, just all of a sudden, it was like uh, the it's world had come to an end. And I was in- It's a double toothpick to, to, to start it happening. Pardon? H-E-double-L. Uh-huh. Oh, know, yeah, 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 yeah. I was at the inauguration. Thing. And like my group was not attacked, but there were many people that were at the inauguration. They were, they were beaten up by the left. And you hear all this stuff about January 6th. January 6th was child's play compared to what happened in some places after Trump's election, what happened in some places after George Floyd's death. They continued for days. And so yeah. there's so much uh, uh, that doesn't operate, so much in America that's not operating the way it should be. And we hear all the time that no one's above the law, but what we see is that only members of the Republican Party ever get uh, charged, convicted, and sent to jail for the things they do uh, uh, among the leadership. And we see people not being held accountable. And when it comes to all those uh, court cases that were brought before judges and dismissed, it's clear that the political left is using the legal system as a weapon. They have judges in place that's in place who are more committed to their progressive agenda than they are to the law of the land. Uh, and so we see a relaxation of um, the rule of law 
and we see one uh, political party who's installed people at the highest echelons who have no love of nation. And so these are, this is new territory. So we can talk about Trump and DeSantis or what the American people want. I think the American people have good sense. And I think they want a leader that puts that country first. I think the American people, you know, would be um, uh, happy with either DeSantis or Trump. But because Trump is such a target, I don't see him being able to rule in peace. And there seem to be some people that are determined to put him behind bars. And I'm afraid that uh, so far, nothing they've tried has worked. I'm afraid that uh, there will be an assassination attempt that may or may not be successful if they can't stop him any other way. And they this hate, hatred, they hate, they hate the man. This hatred of Trump, which is yeah. a lot of manufactured, the things they accuse him of. And what is so astonishing about the political left is that the evil that they do, they accuse other people of it. And they call, they call it evil and they'll paint this picture, but it's exactly what they are doing. And they seem to have uh, perfected the art of deception. And that is what uh, is ruling the day. Well, Carol, this this ballot harvesting. I, I, there's something there's something we got to do there, and the question is, how can we ethically do it? Number one, and number two, if we don't, then we're at the mercy of evil. Well, here's the thing about it: some uh, states have passed it into law, and so uh, in those states. If Republicans want to win elections, they need to uh, take advantage of whatever mechanisms there are. It would be very foolish for Republicans in those states where you have early voting not to get their people to the polls early and, and participate in the early voting because what the mm -hmm. Democrats seem to do, uh, so we're talking partisan now, but what seems to happen is that it almost looks like they like early voting to figure out how many votes they need. And then they go to the ballot harvesters and, and they place an order like you at a restaurant for 500,000 votes or whatever they need. <laughs> and so uh, Republicans need to, you know, get involved, not necessarily if they begin to organize and ballot harvest as well, and they, they sh there should be in all of those states, those records need to be should be concealed in a way that no one can count those ballots until election day. They should not be able to say who voted and who's ahead and who isn't because it makes it too easy to cheat. Mm -hmm. The second, uh, when, when Trump was running the second time, I read an article about this whole thing, about this ballot harvesting. They, they said, what's going to happen is all these states will come in and the Republicans will be winning all across the board. But at the end, this this particular person said, we're gonna end up winning. This was a democratic strategist because we've we've got we've got a, we we will hold our our votes until we see how many we need. <laughs> you right yeah, on. I mean they know exactly they I, they know exactly what they're doing. Absolutely. And uh you know <laughs> I guess for the Republicans, if you can't beat them, join them. But I don't like ballot harvesting, and I think there need to be there, there needs to be stronger penalties for people who are caught cheating, whether it's Absolutely. people that are trying to double vote or people that are manufacturing votes and they're voting people from empty lots. And uh, by the time you actually uncover the evidence, because it takes time to go through and get the evidence, it's months after the election and people have been sworn in. And only now are we getting more and more evidence about how people cheated in 2020. You can't get that stuff uh, immediately. It takes months. It can take years before you know exactly how many people actually voted that were not authorized to vote. Well, let me let me let me just share this. I, I look at the. Um, this is why you're so important in to America, not just Christians, but to America is you got a folks like uh, Candace Owen. And, you know, you started before Candace ever ever thought about starting. <laughs> but you, you've got a trail. You've been leading some trails. You know, you're going to leave some trails on this earth. And it's, it's, it's my, my book's about leaving your life imprint. 
And you are leaving an imprint, whether you recognize it or not. I'm not trying to put kudos over your, your head for something that's not there, but it is there for sure that, you know, Diamond and Silk, you know, Candace Owens, you've you've led you've led some some trailblazing here to say that place is turning into Romans one. That Democratic Party is turning into Romans right. one. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, my work has been prescient. Uh and even before I became a devout believer, God gave me insights. I, I tend to see things before other people do. And it doesn't bother me, you know, the young people that are getting more attention, they're making more money, all of this stuff like that. Uh, and there, there are some young people that you never heard of. There are some middle school kids, uh, uh, that private school kids, homeschool kids that know who I am, that watch my videos when I'm out uh, all over the country, they come up to me and some of them are 10 or 11 and, uh, and that's just so excited. Uh, and so, you know, I want to toss the, the baton to them. And this other generation that gets all the, that's getting a lot of attention, uh, these kids are younger than they are. They, they, so they're not positioned yet, but they're watching me and people like me. And so the influence may be greater with them. Some of the others I'm, I'm closer to, and they may feel like they have to distinguish themselves from me or distance themselves or whatever they do. Uh, it's fine with me. Um, because I have been out there for a long time and I don't mind being a trailblazer, uh, but I'm going to toss that baton to the generation behind some of the ones you named yeah. <laughs> and they're going to catch it. <laughs> that's, and that's beautiful. You know, that, that, that young lady that many years ago, you went through all that, those trials and tribulations that you went through. You didn't see this moment, but God did. Oh, he got me out of Vanderbilt because uh, he had a, a different plan for my life and the level of influence. Like a professor, I had a tenured pos position. No one was forcing me to leave. I could have stayed there. I could have, you know, unless my health totally broke down. I could have taught until I was 80 some or like members of Congress, you stay there till you die. Uh, but uh, it became so uncomfortable for me that I decided to leave academia and take early uh, tenure and early uh, retirement. And uh, that was God's plan because he wanted uh, to position me differently. And so I'm positioned in a way, you know, to make a much greater impact on the nation and the world than I would have been had I stayed at Vanderbilt. Well, think about this. You had some students who were upset by you sticking up for your values and the character of Christ. And I love that because the Bible says, if we're not person, we will be persecuted. If we're going to be Christians, you're, you're going to be, if you got salt of any kind, you're going to get pushed back. But what I loved about your story at Vanderbilt was those students that also wrote letters are of support or, mm -hmm. you know, petition to say, leave our professor alone. Yeah, they did. And you know something? Uh, I, ran into a, I ran into a group of black Vanderbilt students and uh, they were doing something. And they said, you were Professor Swain, because they came like three or four years after me. And I said, yes. And they said, why did you leave? We are so sorry you left. You should have stayed. You could have stuck it out. And I've run into people that have said that. And um and and I and I would like for people to know that it wasn't Vanderbilt students generally that were opposed to me. That there was a movement that was national, and they targeted five conservative professors, four professors, and um, and it was a movement that was you know trying to purge us from academia. And unfortunately, they got rid of all of us except one. Now I, I voluntarily took early retirement, but if I had been if it had been a bed of roses, I would still be there. Uh, so these things had to happen. That's fine. It had to happen. And But I have found that even among my colleagues, the faculty, faculty senate at uh, Vanderbilt, they took a resolution uh, in support of free speech before I left. And there were so many of them that were not happy with the way I was treated. But for myself, 
I chose to leave because I, it was not good for me physically to be under that situation. And I was thinking that I'm not getting any younger. How do I want to spend, you know, the last season of my life? Do I want to spend it in a hostile environment? <laughs> or do I? And I felt like you can't be doing your best work in a hostile environment. And so I stepped out into the unknown and, uh, and God has rewarded me and blessed me for doing that. You're leaving an imprint. That's my, my whole book's premise is <laughs> uh, you're leaving something that will last beyond your lifetime. And I hope so. I mean, because yeah. we all going to die and you know, like people say you're fearless. Well, um, yeah, I, I had a dramatic, uh, conversion experience, you know, where I thought I was dying as an unsafe person. And, you know, I didn't die and I ended up, you know, becoming a devout Christian and I, it took away a fear of death. And I believe that in a fear of God removed my shyness because I had been shy all of my life. He impressed on my mind that he'd given me a message bigger than me and I should focus on the message. And that uh, is what opened the doors to the media because I had turned down media opportunities like Good Morning America because I was fearful. But once God impressed on my mind that he was the only one I had to please, and I felt like I had a message that he'd given me something to do, then uh, I've been out there, you know, trying to do it. And I realized that teachers are called to, uh, in the Bible, are called to a higher standard of accountability and that what I do and how I live my life matters because people are watching me and I don't want to cause others to stumble. And, uh, and it is a responsibility that I feel uh, and I pray to end well, because sometimes when you become your most prosperous, when you're at the height of your career, you know, when you are uh, up there where you think you're untouchable, that's when you fall. Yeah. Well, my birthday is in two days and you've already given me a beautiful <laughs> birthday gift by being here with us today. Well, happy and, birthday. Uh, it's just you know, it's just a blessing to let you just talk and encourage our country, encourage our young people, uh, encourage our children, our families. And so thank you for uh, gifting us with your time. And uh, we, we're, we're honored uh, for what you do. And uh, we're going to keep praying for you that God gives you many more years to continue uh, trailblazing for other uh, folks to come after you. Well, thank you so much. And it's been an honor. It's great seeing you and hope to see you in person soon. Brother Hyrick smiling this morning. He's 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 the one who brought <laughs> us together, right? He sure did. <laughs> well, Carol, God bless you, and uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we'll we'll look forward to staying connected. God bless you. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. If you guys have any questions, or if you would like to donate and receive the book, please head on over to kennymuck.org/show. Here you can ask us any questions that you might have, as well as make a donation. Thank you so much for watching.